Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at the, uh, the new Excel filter function uh, that we have available to us. Um, the real benefit of using this, um, I, want, I was only going to say it surpasses the VLOOKUP, but it doesn't. Um, but to give an example, with, when we're using the VLOOKUP function, uh, obviously our purpose of using that is we have a particular uh, value that, uh, or variable that we want to search for in a table and return another piece of information. So an example of that could be, uh, as you see in the example we've got in the table, if we wanted to see, okay, what was the uh, expenses for London, we could obviously have our value of London and we might want to VLOOK up this range, just these four cells in this poor example, uh, to re return obviously what the expense number was. But VLOOKUP, as we know, only will, re will only return one uh, value or one piece of information. But what if, as per our example we're going to be looking at, we want to return every example that matches our criteria. So that being... Uh, again, sticking with London, we can see that we wouldn't want to just return in the scenario of wanting to return multiple uh, or, or all those that match. Sorry, in our example of London, we can see that we've got a, a match for finance, one for human resources, and one for sales. So we can see there's actually three pieces of information that we want to return, and that is where the filter function uh, enables us to do just that. So what we're going to do is just drop down, dive straight in really. Uh, we've got the, syn the syntax at the top here so we can see what this filter function looks like. Uh, very simply, all we need to do is enter the word filter and then we've got three parts to enter. Um, firstly, we'll look at the first two, just the most important, the array and the include. And also it gives us uh, a bit of error handling, you could say, by giving an option what to do if empty. But I'll get to that in a second. So. All we need to do, uh, first thing we'll start off by putting a drop down in the city. Uh, you could just type in our values uh, or our cities as required, but uh, we want to obviously be very you know, accurate and make sure that there's going to be no mistake with the incorrect uh, spelling or a wrong city entered. So all we're going to do here is go into, uh, do a quick drop down. So let's just go and do data, uh, data validation, uh, we're going to do a quick list. Our source is going to be these first five values here because that is the total of our cities. Do OK. And you can see we've now got a drop down in there. What is perfect. So now to enter our formula. So we're just going to go down, drop down one below um, where we've obviously got the, the city added there with our drop down. And all we need to type into here is equals filter. Open our brackets and then we're diving straight in. So the first part is our array. So we just want to select the entirety of our table. So that's as we've selected here. So we've got the department, the city, and the expenses columns all included. The next part is our include. So what is the, what do we basically want to filter? Uh, so for that, all we need to do is select the city column because we want to filter the city column for only the city we're interested in. And we're then going to do the equal symbol. And we're then going to select the, uh, the reference here of G8 for us, what is where we've got our drop down for city. And having done that, I'm going to do brackets and hit enter. And you can see initially it's given us a calc error because obviously we haven't provided the city. But as soon as we select a city, so go for London, you can see that the formula actually expands out for us. So you can see rather than just being in this one cell, it's actually um, done exactly that. It's expanded and put it in as many spaces as required. Uh, so to give another example, uh, if we were to try and change Cambridge over here, let's say that that's London as well, you can see that it's picked up as an additional one as well, so we'll add it in there. But I'm just going to change this back to Cambridge, and you can see it's got back to our three. Uh, the formatting will not carry across, so all we just need to do is make sure that we do copy that across for as many rows as we require. So I'm just going to literally just do that whole column, just depending on how much data we pull across. But there you go, that is the, uh, the formula basically in its entirety. If I do just remove this piece of data validation, so let's go to data and let's go validation and just go clear all, okay? So if I was to put in here a city that doesn't exist in our list, so I think the example I thought of was Bristol, so go to Bristol and hit enter, you can see we get that calc error and we'll get exactly the same if this is left blank. So how do we deal with that? Well, the benefit we have is the third and final piece of our syntax we can see is this optional one of if empty. 
So what that means is if you've done the filter as required, but there's actually no matching variables, what do we want um, to return? And simply for us, all we're going to do in that third part is in quotes put uh, not found. So you could put anything you want in there. You could maybe even reference another value, do a formula, do anything uh, that meets your particular criteria. But for us, we're just going to put in there the text of not found. And when I hit enter, you can see that not found. So basically, there's a blank here. So it's obviously not going to find that. If I was to put a Bristol, so an incorrect city or one that's not in our list, again, it's going to get not found. But if I was to instead put a value we know exists, so we've got Cardiff there, you can see that we've, uh, we've now returned those values correctly as required. So I think that covers off quite well how to use the filter function. And as mentioned, you don't need to be limited to just the three examples we've got here. You can obviously do as many as you need. The next example that I have, I'm just going to scroll down to, is exactly the same table, but allows me just to elaborate on just a couple of, maybe a better way of working. What I've done here is if I go into the data, I've converted this into a table. And you can see that if I go to the home tab here, uh, you can see, well, nope, you can't see it as one, and I'm going to jump ahead to get something I didn't want to do. So if you're not familiar with, well, you can see the table design tab actually popped up there. If I click away and go into our data, you can see we've now got a table design, and you can see I've named this table expenses. If you're not sure how to insert a table, uh, all you need to do is just select all of your data, Simply go into the insert tab, and obviously I can't at the moment, but if I go to this above example, highlight all that data, insert tab, go to table, you'll get this pop up. Just make sure you've got the my table has headers ticked, as long as you've obviously selected the headers. Hit OK, and then it'll uh, create it as a table for you. By default, it'll do um, its default <laughs> um, blue formatting on the cells, but all you, all you need to do is just go into the formatting options that you can find if you go into table options, uh, the table styles. So I think by default it'll do maybe like this blue one or something similar to it, um, but I've just gone on to the, the no format. Just I, just I just prefer the format for this example. But that's how to get a table in there if you haven't done already. So for this example, rather than obviously referencing an actual range as we did up here, and just to remind you, obviously you can see we referenced that whole range there. All we now need to do is just go into do another filter function and sorry the point the reason I put a table in there is to show you that in this filter function we can actually reference a table rather than just a, a given array so for us how we need to do that now is I'm just going to put in here uh, another city so let's go to Edinburgh and what I could do as well is just change this and put back our piece of data validation so we've got a drop down because it's just Again, better ways of working. It's a good way of just thing to always remember. Okay, so yeah, we can see we've got those drop downs now available to us. So in this time, I'm going to go into equals filter and over our function, go into our variables. So this time for the array, rather than select this range, when you've got a table in there, all you need to do is if you hover over the top left hand corner, uh, just yeah, literally the top left hand corner of the first cell that contains your header, you can see you get this uh, this dark, uh, slightly obviously different angled arrow. Once you get that, if you just click, you can see it will select the whole table for you. And you can see it's done exactly just that and populated it into our function for us. So we've just got the word expenses, what is the table reference. If I now do a comma to move into the include section, so again, for this, because we want to do a filter on the city column, we don't need to select that range. All we need to do is hover over city, and you can see that you get this other slightly down, this downwards arrow now, the, the thicker one. So if I just select that, you can see it's going to say, OK, the expenses table in brackets city column. And this time, all we need to then carry on doing is do our equals, select our drop down. So when obviously the city column is equal to our drop down of Cambridge in this example. And then because we know how it works, we're going to do com comma, and in the third and final part, we're going to put not found uh, if obviously there is a value that's entered that is not present in our table, or alternatively, if that drop down is left blank. Hit blank, hit enter, and then you can see obviously we've got our values uh, as you would expect. Let's just copy the formatting of this down. So let's go into this one here, not that it matters. Copy that down for the whole length. Perfect, so yeah, so you see if I obviously clear the drop down, it's gonna give not found. But let's go back into another one, let's go Birmingham, so you can see it's pulled all those values through for us. The real benefit of obviously using this table is it allows us to uh, stay dynamic. So with this, 
a first example, if we wanted to start adding more pieces of information at the bottom here, so if I was to do another one for Cardiff, uh, so let's think of another department, IT, Cardiff, um, and let's say we've got a revenue of 10,000, copy the formatting, you can see that nothing's happened because in order for me to or from, in order for this new piece of information to filter into this uh, the formula up here, we'd first need to go into the filter and then we'd need to drag down all of these ranges to make sure it's looking at that new piece of information. And as you, once you've done that, it will filter through, but obviously it allows for human error, so obviously not update the, the formula, and also it's just a bit clunky and it's just not giving us the diet the approach we want. And it's just one thing we don't need to worry about or be thinking about when we're adding new data. The benefit of obviously adding a table is as soon as new information is added, so if I do IT and this example is Birmingham, uh, let's go Birmingham, you can see that it's been added in there straight away, let's put a thousand there, and that's the benefit of using the table, and why I'd always insist using a table, if you can, when you're doing such references, just to ensure that your data is being kept up to date. And another example is particularly useful, again, for if you're popping this formula in and then the worksheet is being shared with a colleague or someone else or another team and they're going to be the ones who are updating it, again, it just makes it robust so that as they're going to be utilising the, the form, it just means that they're not going to have to be worrying about things not falling through or, again, as always, they'll come back to you and say, oh, it's not working, it's broken. Well, actually, obviously, they just haven't updated. But by doing the table reference, sorry, I waffled that out, it just eliminates any sort of potential risks or problems. So hope you enjoyed that video and it's gone into enough depth for you to uh, start now using that in your work. If you do have any questions, uh, just drop a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like. Uh, not only does it show me the, the content uh, that you're interested in seeing more of, uh, it will also help that YouTube algorithm, what's all important for making sure that other people can find our content and enjoy the videos as well. Lastly, if you haven't already or if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification button as well, that way you should be notified of all of our future videos uh, as they come out. So thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel, you'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorised together, so make sure you check those out uh, and get all those useful information. And obviously as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.